Okay, in this vinyl video, we're going to look at making a pneumatic beam structure using Fasid Musavi's Function of Form book as a guideline. And here you see the final model in Rhino. So we can get started with a new file. And our units will be large objects feet. And we'll maximize the perspective view and work completely in 3D type in units and our model units are set to feet our distance display feet inches and let's set up our grid clicking on grid and we'll set the grid extents to 250 feet minor grid lines every 5 feet major grid lines every 10 minor and let's set our snap spacing to 5 feet okay we're gonna start out by making three circles so the first circle is going to be 100 foot radius and the second circle will be a 50 foot radius and the third will be a 10 foot radius okay so now we're gonna pick a couple of these circles up vertically in 3d space so along the z-axis so I'll select a 50 foot radius, type in move, enter, and we're going to move these up vertically. So from the command line, I want to set vertical equal to yes. I'm going to snap to the center and move this one up 25 feet. And then the last circle we drew with the 10 foot radius, and want vertical equal yes, snapping to its center point and we're going to move this one up 35 feet okay now you see this forms the outline of our dome okay next thing we need to do is we're going to draw a three-point arc and you should have your object snap set to center and quad and we can type in arc enter at the command line and we'll choose start point so it's looking for a start end and point on the arc so my start can be the quadrant of the lower circle, my end can be the quadrant of the upper circle, and the point on the arc will be the quadrant of the middle circle. And there you see we have our 3D arc. Now I'm going to host a circle to the beginning or bottom of that arc. So I'm going to create a circle, and I'm making this just on the C plane set to world top, and this is going to be a radius of five feet. Okay, the next circle that I need to draw, I want to draw a tangent to this arc at the intersection of the arc and this circle. Okay, so I'm going to draw a construction line. I'm just going to type in line, enter, and that line is going to be from the center of this arc, which I'll need to zoom out so you can see that. So when I hover over that arc, you'll see that center point is down at the, near the bottom of my screen. So I'll start the line there, and I'm going to snap it to the quadrant of that circle. Okay, so now I have uh, a tangent line that I can use to set up my construction plane so that it's parallel to the construction line that we just drew. So I'm going to deselect everything. I'm going to type in CP, Enter. I'm going to choose curve from the command line and select this curve. Now notice in the command line it says select curve to orient C plane perpendicular to. Well, we're eventually going to want this construction plane to be parallel to that curve so we'll have to rotate it after we align it. So I'll select this curve. Now it's also looking for the origin of the construction plane which should be the end point of that curve. So I'll pick that point and there you see the construction plane, you see the y-axis and green is perpendicular to this curve. So I want my construction plane to be parallel to it. So I can type in CP, choose rotate from the command line and I want to rotate about the x-axis, about the red axis. So I click on X and 90 enter and now you see the y-axis and green is parallel to the tangent line. 
So now I can draw my second circle at the quadrant and the intersection of the 3D arc. And this is going to have a radius of 10 feet. Okay, so now I'm going to loft a surface between these two circles. So I'll just select both of them using the shift key, type in loft, enter. I'm not worried about the seams at this point, which is what those white arrows indicate. And I'll just choose the default. And let's take a look at, look at this in a shaded view. Okay. So now I just need to create the second half of the inflated beam. So again, I'm going to need to host a circle at the end point of this arc, and I want it to be tangent to the arc. So I'm going to draw another construction line. Just type it in line enter from the center of our 3D arc to the quadrant of that circle. I'm going to deselect everything and type in CP and click on curve from the command line. Click on my tangent line. Put the origin of the construction plane on the end point. Okay, and we're just going to rotate that construction plane on the x-axis 90 degrees and we can draw our last circle and it's gonna have a radius of 2.5 feet and I'm gonna loft between that circle and previous circle we drew and type in loft enter not worried about the scene choose OK and there's the second part of our inflated beam now if you notice when I zoom in it is hollow okay, you can see all the way out down to the bottom so I want this to be a closed solid poly surface so what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to put a sphere. So I'm going to type in sphere, enter, and use the center of the last circle I drew, and use the quadrant of the last circle I drew. Okay, there is the sphere. If I change this to wireframe, you'll see the sphere is inside this inflated beam. So I'm going to trim that, and I'm going to use the inflated beam as the cutting object. So I'm going to type in trim, enter, select the inflated beam as the cutting object, enter, select the object to trim, which is the sphere. Okay, so there we have that. And now I can join these three surfaces together to make a poly surface. So I'll select the sphere and the two beams using the shift key. I'm going to type in join. And if I type in the command what, we'll see that this is a valid poly surface, but it's not a closed poly surface yet. It still has a hole at the very bottom. So we can use the command cap, enter, and now we'll see that it has a bottom. If I select it now and I type in the command what, enter, you'll see it's a closed solid poly surface so it's watertight it's something that we could 3d print okay now we just need to do a polar array and our construction plane should be set to world top and we have the inflated beam selected we can array this polar using the center point of the circle and our number of items is going to be 16 our angle to fill should be the default of 360 so I'll choose enter and there you have it our inflated beam structure